Hi students. Uh, Hello. Sir. Please wait uh, so that uh, all the students will uh, join. <clears throat> I hope you are getting my voice. Please uh, yes, respond sir. in the chat box. Is that uh, loud and clear? Okay. So we'll wait for uh, five minutes so that uh, students will join. Uh, maybe. We had another class. Uh, Dheeraj Krishna, uh, please uh, edit your uh, name, that is the uh, roll number followed by your name, please. So that it will be easy to take the attendance. So Dheeraj, if you are listening, please uh, edit your name, that is the uh, roll number followed by your name. <coughs> yeah, fine. Thank you. Uh, Manish, please uh, edit your name. That is a uh, roll number followed by your name. So, Manish, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Manish, if you are listening, please edit your name. Uh, Suprabha, you also. Please edit a uh, roll number followed by your name. <clears throat> Suprabha, please edit your name. That is a roll number followed by your name, please. Uh, if anyone tell me how many students were there in another class so that I can start the session, uh, please respond in the chat box. So for 24, if you if we say the number, once the number came, I can start the lecture. Yes, uh, please respond. Anyone? How many students were there in a other class so total 55 members okay that means uh, 30 more left to join the class <clears throat> So Rishi, if you are listening, uh, please edit your name. That is a roll number followed by your name, please. <coughs> Rishi, please uh, edit your name. First roll number, then your name. Uh, 
Naveen and uh, iPhone 10. I don't know your name, please. So please edit your name as roll number followed by your name. Naveen and uh, other fellow, please edit your names. Shrikar, <clears throat> Shrikar, please edit your name as a roll number followed by your name, please. All of you, Vamshi Kishore, if you are listening, please edit your name. That is a roll number followed by your name. Shrikar, please. Shrikar and Omshi Kishore, please edit your name. Yes, sir. Why? Because uh, for uh, taking that in, it will be difficult to... Kaveshri, please edit your name as uh, first roll number, then your name, please. And uh, make it a full roll number. Don't write 2039. Please write full roll number followed by your name. And it should be like this for the entire course. Kaveshri, please edit first roll number. Yeah, number. Okay, sir. Yes, thank you. Ananta Tyagi and Kaveshri, please edit your roll numbers. First roll number, then your name. So, Raghunandan, please read your name. First roll number followed by your name, please. So, I hope you are. Uh, so, is this a screen visible to all of you? So, I'm going to start the lecture. Uh, so, because it's an introduction to the course, so, so no problem. If anyone is, yeah, everyone, please respond. I hope all are you, all of you, active. Yes, sir. The screen is visible. Forty four members came. Yes, visible. <clears throat> 
So uh, please bear with uh, uh, this, uh, what do you call, uh, some waiting time because students uh, join. Few lectures, it will be like this. Otherwise, uh, after that, after 10 minutes, I will not admit anyone. So please uh, see that. Try to be online like uh, up to 10 minutes. Like, well, suppose 11 to 12 class is there. So 11, 10 from the next class onwards. So, okay. Uh, going to start the lecture and uh, whoever is I hope all of you are uh, logging with uh, your roll number followed by your name Akhil Anand please uh, edit your name first roll number then followed by your roll number sorry name roll number followed by your name Akhil please uh, edit okay so so good morning everyone so my name is uh, Vankateshwarlu. So I am your uh, course course instructor instructor for this course that is Communication Network Security or CNS. Course code will be WEC four four nine. So this is the lecture one. Uh, we'll see some basic concepts. So that's why I give an introduction to the course. Uh, maybe uh, why we need to study this course or what we are going to learn in this course. And uh, We'll see the syllabus and some basic concepts. Okay, so these are the objectives for this lecture syllabus. Then now we need this basic concept that is called OSI model. So, what is the OSI model? What are the uh, layers in this model and what are the functionalities of those layers? If time permits, we'll see some basic concepts of network sec security, right? Now, I hope all of you are getting the voice clearly. The picture is blurred. Okay. Uh, if uh, suppose if you are not getting voice or picture is uh, no blurred, please uh, refresh the uh, app. So voice is uh, low. <clears throat> okay. I will increase my volume. Uh, now is it clear if I uh, go with this uh, volume? Yeah, yeah. Now picture is clear also. Forty-two. Please refresh so that I can get. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we will discuss the syllabus of this uh, network security course, we should know some basic concept or what is the idea behind this uh, learning what are the things we are going to learn so uh, it is based on the uh, information sharing or data transferring between the computers or system suppose i'm having a system one and system two if these two are connected to exchange the information, we can say this is a computer network. Or it may be multiple computers connected. Yeah, please uh, don't uh, write anything. Just keep on uh, listening. Right? Suppose these two systems are connected to a LAN, this is also connected to a LAN and these two are connected for a medium. So this is also we can say one computer network. So whenever this system is exchanging the information or these two systems are exchanging the information between these over a medium or over a network, right? So what are the things? Are what are the protocols it is going to be used when the data is exchanging? That is one case. Another is how the data is transferred, we can say. Okay, what are the protocols will be used? The second thing is the security. So that is okay. This fellow is sending some data. So how can we 
show sure, sure that the data is secure or data is confidential right so the data should be in between these one and two only another fellow should not you no know, take that information or it cannot observe that information or it cannot steal that information so that is what we are going to uh, learn in this communication network course that is security course so how we are providing the security for the information or for the data is it clear so what is the computer network so when the two systems are connected to exchange the information we can say there is a one network or multiple systems are connected to exchange the information exchange in the information we can say communication right so that's why the communication network security so whenever two systems or multiple systems are communicating so how we are able to uh, give the security for that information right yes all of you following please respond in the chat box so that i will uh, go further always remember uh, all the lectures will be like interactive right so everyone should be alert at least 20 to 30 minutes you have to be alert the remaining 20 minutes we will uh, discuss right uh, questions we may give some quiz questions in between the lecture so please uh, everyone listen carefully if you are not getting anything please uh, raise your hand you can ask a question so that i will uh, clarify them yes so the, the this course is about the how to secure the data or how to secure the information so that is one now uh, later after we discuss the syllabus we will see how the data will be transferred between two systems right so yeah you know we'll have five modules so module one will be data encryption so that is uh, in this we'll see what are the different types of security attacks right how to uh, give this uh, to enhance the security mechanism so security mechanisms we'll see then uh, different uh, models and the different uh, algorithms we'll see how what are the encryption algorithms or decryption algorithms etc we'll see in the module 1 in module 2 we'll see the uh, different algorithms so public key cryptography and rsc algorithms are there to give the or enhance the security different algorithms we'll see in the module 2 so module 3 about the data integrity algorithms so when it comes to actual the security so we need to see three things generally we will we'll see in depth uh, later just see what are the those three things one is called confidentiality or confidential how can we make the information confidential and how we can make it data must be integrity and the last one is availability so mainly these three things uh, uh, we are going to see in terms of the security of any data or information confidentiality integrity and availability so availability in the sense so if i am a authorized person so that the information should be available to me the information should not available for unauthorized author unauthorized user unauthorized okay so how will the data is confidential so different based on the different algorithms so we will make confidential different uh, algorithms will be used for data integrity and different uh, algorithms will be used for the availability of the data or information is this clear so far what is these three things and uh, Be, that's why uh, i have so cryptographic data integrity algorithm so integrity data integrity means so the data should not be you now improvised or it should not be modified so how how can we do that using these uh, algorithms so that is uh, module 3 in module 4 uh, there is one transport layer generally uh, will uh, 
will be in uh, actually the OSI model layers. So I'm going to discuss that also, but how to provide this uh, security for this transport layer. So what the transport layer will do, I'll explain a few minutes later. So that is a model four. We'll discuss about the transport layer security and the model five will be IP security, inter uh, inter internet protocol security. So how it is done, so what are the functionalities, what are the policies, etc. We will see in module five. So these are the uh, five modules we are going to uh, study. And the textbook I will follow will be this one, Cryptography and Network Security by William Stallings. Right? So that is about the syllabus and uh, what, why or what are the things we are going to learn in this course that is communication network security now uh, we'll see whenever any information or data is exchanging or transferring from one system to another system what is actually happen or what are the protocols generally will be used in a computer network it may be lan it may be wan man etc it is of uh, uh, what you call referred or reference model we can say so that is open system interconnect model so open system interconnect model a reference model right so whenever the data is uh, transferring from suppose sender to the uh, receiver side or destination side, so how it is going to be modified, right? Before going through the medium, after uh, coming to the system, how it will be processed. So that we are going to see. Then we will talk about how the data will be secure. What are the different types of algorithms, etc. Yeah. So it consists of seven layers, application layer, presentation layer, session layer, transport layer, network layer, data link layer, and physical layer. Now uh, we'll see like this. So uh, suppose this is the sender and here a receiver. Right, so suppose one system is there. Now, uh, what the application generally used here is, so whenever you open a browser, right, that is called network application. So network application is used, our application layer will be used in network applications. Okay, students are coming. Uh, so, what are the data? First, we'll come to the application layer. Generally, it will not come to the application layer. So, application layer used by network applications. What are these network applications like Google Chrome, Firefox, Mozilla, etc. etc. So, when you are when we are opening a browser. Right. What are the protocols will be used? Remember, all layers, all the seven layers will consist of some protocols. Based on those protocols only, uh, these layers will be operated. Or uh, each layer has its own functionalities. Right? So, application layer, suppose when you are opening a, a browser or web surfing, it will be there are some protocols HTTP or HTTPS. These are the protocols for web surfing. I hope uh, you know whenever you are uh, typing a, uh, any uh, site, so click info or facebook.com. So there will be HTTPS, call and etc. etc. will be there. So these are the protocols for web surfing. Right? So that is these applications used in the application layer or application layer used by network applications 
So different protocols are there. You will see in-depth analysis for, in a computer networks course if you are opted. So is this clear application layer? Or it's very simple is, it is the interface between user and system, very simple. Is this clear? What is the application layer? What is the functionality? If you are opening a facebook.com, yes, there is some protocol. So that is a in application layer. Everyone, please respond. Is this clear? What is the functionality of application layer? Right. So now the data will go to the next layer, which is called presentation layer. Right. So see, whenever we try to send some information, so this is in the receiver side or uh, destination. So whatever the data is coming to the presentation layer, it will, be, it will be like a characters or digits, numbers, right? But that will not understand by the system, computer. So what the presentation layer functionalities will be, it will translate, translation, these characters into bits or binary digits, ones and zeros. Not only that, as it is, if it is uh, converting into number of bits, it's, so you will get so many number of bits. The data will be very huge. So, if you are sending those data, so we need more storage, more capacity, right? Storage capacity, uh, we may require so much time to deliver that. So, for that, what it also performs is data compression. And uh, there is one more thing is called data encryption or decryption, right? So what is that? To give some security for the data. So that is called data encryption. So encryption, if it is performing in the encryption here, so here it should perform decryption also, right? These three functionalities of presentation layer translation converting the characters into the binary format and data compression and encryption or decryption so that is done in the presentation layer the, the data will move to the next layer which is called session layer so what this will perform is suppose two systems are there so first it will establish the connection, right? Establishing the connection. How, suppose if you are uh, uh, sending some information, first it, it should establish a connection between these two by calling it as authentication. That is, who is this fellow, etc. And uh, there is one more functionality, authorization. So this, this fellow is authorized or not, this fellow is authorized or not to use the information. And the next one is called session management. These three functionalities will be done in the session layer. That is That means uh, connection establishment, when to terminate the connection and so on. So authentication, authorization and session management. Session management is also including like how much data is transferred between the two systems. So it will keep on those, you no, know, uh, uh, what we can say, keep tracking the files, how many files are transferring between the systems, etc. So that is session, session in the sense. So session management, establishing the connection, terminating the connection. So giving the authorization or uh, authentication, that is uh, first, uh, suppose username, password will give, no? So that is called like authentication. So who am I? Is it clear? Application layer, presentation layer, and session layer. So up to now, so we'll get here one, some zeros after converting the compression, etc. Now actual work will start from the 
next layer which is called transport layer so this huge number of data or bits will be converted into segments in the transport layer so that is called segmentation right so like it may consist of one segment it may consist of multiple segments so one two three ten and so on so what will be there in the segments will be what is the actual data will be there right then it will add some extra bits for uh, no error correction or error detection here there is a random bits will be there or check some bits so here it will add some different names or port numbers and a sequence number so what this port number or sequence number will be suppose think that this is a system one and here he is using gmail.com or click info or facebook.com so for each this uh, application it will provide the port number p1 p2 p3 etc if gmail to gmail in the receiver side suppose that is a p1 so that means gmail to gmail the data is transferring so it will identify the exact port or exact application by using the port number is it clear what is the port number is indicating it is to verify or identify the exact application from in the sender side or receiver side what is the sequence number will do is suppose multiple segments are there four three two one four segments are there we don't know first segment will come first or second or third fourth we don't know so it may first it may come fourth segment and then uh, two then three then one so if i know the sequence uh, sorry segment numbers or sequence number then we can rearrange or reassemble reassemble at the receiver side by using the sequence number so that is called the segmentation is this clear all of you transport layer will perform the segmentation that is the bits or which are coming from the session layer will be converted into segments and segment consists of port number sequence number sequence number and followed by the data and port number will be useful to identify the exact application and sequence number will be used to reassemble the data this is one functionality of the transport layer segmentation the second one is called flow control so what is the meaning of flow control is so system 1 is there system 2 is there uh, it can send the data with the 10 mbps speed okay but this fellow can only take 5 mbps the data rate of this system 2 is only 5 mbps so if i am sending with the same speed of 10 mbps it the receiver side we may lose the data right so it's very coming fast ones and zeros are coming so but this fellow it's a very slow the data rate so that we may lose some data so what is the meaning of flow control which is done in the transport layer is this s2 will request to s1 through the transport layer reduce the data rate reduce the data rate so i am only my data rate is 5 mbps so we have to reduce the data rate to the 5 mbps that is called the flow, flow control mechanism that is called also synchronizing synchronizing the uh, data rate right is this clear what is the meaning of flow control all of you 
yes getting my points please respond flow control means opposite is also possible right system 3 uh it is having suppose 100 mbps and the system 4 is there uh it can uh, up to 100 mb uh, uh, 100 mbps okay 100 mbps okay suppose think that these are the maximum data rate of this s3 but it is uh, now sending with a uh, 50 mbps only just think that the capacity of s3 is 100 mbps but it is sending with a 50 mbps speed data rate now but it can accept up to 100 mbps right again it can request that it can increase the data rate to 100 mbps because my capacity is 100 mbps so here reducing the data rate here increasing the data rate. so both is called the flow control because see if my capacity is 100 mbps and the this fellow is sending with only 50 mbps because this fellow taking so much time to receive the data right so which is a waste of time so that if you are sending 100 mbps data so i can suppose 50 mbps i may require about 10 minutes but with the 100 mbps data right we we will make finish with a 5 minutes only. so to increase the uh, the what is the uh, reduce the Uh, reaching the time yes, sir is this clear what is the flow control reducing the data rates increasing the data rates etc flow control mechanism so that i will go with the next functionality yes any question if you want i can answer right not only this it may it may perform error control that means yes we are talking about one and zero so there may be some errors right error possibility is there so it may detect the errors by check using some check some bits you may have heard about in a digital electronics or some other course error control mechanism or digital communication so it may add some extra bits right so in the receiving side it will check those bits to detect any errors that is also performed by our functionality of the transport layer right so that is a transport layer functionalities right the next layer is network layer network layer so here it is performing again uh, three operations or functionalities here logical addressing so the segments will come to the network layer and it will what it will do is it will convert those segments into packets okay by adding this logical addressing and using those we will have some routing and path determination so and remember for any every system ip address will be there no yes or no so this is ip1 this is ip2 so and this is packet in packets the actual data which is a segment and it will add two more things that is source or sender ip address and a destination ip address or receiver ip address so the center it may add again for error correction or detection so this is called a packet source ip address or sender ip address destination ip address or receiver ip address it will add so that we can uh, identify the systems is it clear so based on this ip address it may find the correct routing right so suppose there is a server 
this is uh, system one and this is system two. This suppose this is two requested from the server. Suppose this is a uh, we can say Facebook server. This fellow requested some suppose some image. So when it is sending the data here, it will have the the star two fifty five two fifty five two fifty five dot zero and our one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot two dot one. Suppose this is the source IP address and this is the suppose this IP IP address is something like this three dot two. So in that packet, it should add this IP address also. This is the destination address. So it will find this route. It will not go through the this route, right? So based on the IP addresses, it will find the correct route or routing. That is called routing. Next, what is the path determination means? So S one is there. It can go different. Uh, so many routers will be there. So for one, two, three, it may go to another router. Four, right? It may go to this. Or it may go to one more router, right? And so on. And this is S two. So the data will choose this path, or it can go this path, or it can go this path, or it can go this path. So that is called the path determination. So based on some protocols, it may identify the shortest path, etc. So that is called the path determination. Is it clear? What is the functionality of network layer? Logical addressing, routing, and path determination based on the IP address. The next layer is the data link layer. So data link layer. So the packets. Coming from the network layer will be converted into frames in the data link layer. So, what the data link layer is, or will be, what are the functionality will be? Here is it will add physical address to the packets, which will be calling it as a frame. So, can you tell me what is the physical address of any system? It's nothing but MAC address. MAC address. Yes or no? The physical address of any system will be MAC address. So based on the MAC address, it will find the correct no, system. So we can say the net inter, network interface card will be there. No. So, so there is a MAC address will be there. So what is the data link layer will be adding here is so the packet is coming from the network layer and it will add again source mac address destination mac address and some uh, check some bits or some extra bits for again error correction or error detection so this is called a frame so is this clear for the physical addressing I hope all the points are clear. Data link layer is uh, no. It will add a physical address, which is called MAC address. So it will co correctly identify the system, correct system where it should be deliver the data. So the last one is the physical layer. How the data? So physical layer. So actual uh, raw bits will transfer through the physical layer. See, the frames are coming, right? Which is like ones and zeros only, right? So can we send through air these ones and zeros? Is it possible? Tell me. No. Yes, can you send ones and zeros through air or through copper cable or uh, through optical fiber please tell me how can we able to send this ones and zeros so before sending this we need to convert into signals yes or no this ones and zeros must be converted into signals it may be 
electrical signals it may be light signals or it may be radio wave signals etc based on the medium so if it is a copper cable it will be converted into electrical signal like a square waves or pulses right if it is a optical fiber we may need light signals through if it is air radio wave signals right so it is actual the physical raw bits will be transferred here in the physical layer see so application layer presentation layer session layer transport layer network layer data link layer physical layer so physical layer to physical layer yes or no the data is transferring or the pulses based on the medium so the both this is system one so this is the first layer from the system one or we can say sender or we can say source but in case if it is a s2 which is the destination or receiver side again it physical layer to physical layer only right then opposite again network uh, what you call data link layer network layer then transport layer session layer presentation layer and application etc the reverse process will be performed in the destination side so every uh, you will uh, come to know or you have to study in computer networks course that is what is the protocols will be used in each layer for each model one layer you have to study in the computer networks course but what is our uh, aim in this course will be when the data is transferring or a huge amount of information is transferring between the system how we can provide or how can we secure the information so that is the main thing so yes we are exchanging the information how much confidentiality we are providing example see uh, suppose the you you are getting the results right the same results take it as a same results so same results will be uh, provide for each roll number or it is uh, no it is put it in the in like a uh, uh, what do you call in the server so that everyone can see no right there is some confidential here yes or no there is a, some confidentiality suppose uh, faculty list is there is there any confidential here so we can say less confidential compared to the your results yes or no you can go to the website and uh, each department wise there is a faculty list and faculty information but can you find the your results each uh, student results or can i find student uh, information on the website no so there is some confidential here so high confidential medium confidentiality low confidentiality so how we are providing those confidentiality based on the algorithms etc so that is what we are going to learn in the communication network security course i getting my point here what is this security what we are going to learn yes please what is the meaning of confidentiality and uh, yes all of you listening the please respond is my voice is uh, audible yeah points are clear or not so what we are going to learn so are we may, are we giving some confidentiality or not then data integrity so what is the integrity data integrity can i change your results by go, go to the uh, website can i change your results from a grade to f grade so that is not possible right we are giving some the security for that integrity for that i cannot change as i like the data yes or no 
that is called the integrity and uh, availability so one is the confidentiality and the data integrity and availability now see here uh, my roll number is 101 example okay i'm speaking <clears throat> one second Okay, last few minutes, so please uh, listen carefully uh, so that you will get some basic idea of what we are going to see. So, the first one was confidentiality, data integrity. And availability. Now, what is the availability means? So, my roll number is or your roll number is 101. So, I'm going to see my results. Now, can 102 can see your results? The results of 101 roll number will be available to this fellow only. Yes or no? So, the whatever the data is available for authorized persons only or authorized users it should not available for unauthorized users so that is called the availability so the information must be available for authorized users not for unauthorized users yes or no is this clear confidentiality integrity and availability so these three things we should look into in terms of security see the computer security it's not like no we, we are not uh, providing the security for the computer we are providing the security for the information or data right so protection of, of our Automated, automated information system. So do, uh, don't see this you know, test book uh, definition. So we are preserving the integrity, availability and the confidentiality of information. So that information coming from the different, different sources, right? It may be hardware, it may be software, firmware or any data, any telecommunication, etc. So main these how we are providing the data integrity and how we are making availability of that information and how we are giving or making confidentiality of that information so that is called this right this is called cia trial that is confidentiality integrity and availability so what are these and uh, what is the security architecture etc the main uh, things will start from the next lecture so the first topic in the model one will be security attacks so that we will discuss in the next lecture i hope whatever i discuss in today's lecture it is clear if you are having any questions you can ask me yes so far any question any uh, Clarifications required. Uh, we will uh, discuss the concepts from this uh, CAA trial from Amina in the next lecture. So, so far, what we have discussed is uh, this OSI uh, model, open system interconnect model, how the data is transferring from two systems or in the network, and what are the what is the syllabus for this course? Right? So, please, any questions? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, okay. I hope all the participants are okay. There are some fellows, Rishita, T. Bharadwaj. 
and uh, 183 roll number so please uh, edit your name so that is roll number followed by your name so that i can uh, note down the attendance properly so rishita bharadwaj if you are listening uh, roll number 040183 i don't know so please uh, edit your names as your roll number followed by your name your section whatever first roll number it should appear first roll number so that uh, attendance will be proper and uh, remember uh